Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be doing a video and unfortunately I haven't got a huge amount of time, but I think we're gonna be able to cover it all. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Ali Gordon and basically I started YouTube about a year ago and throughout that year I found a huge interest and passion for videography. I basically just took it upon myself to learn as much as I can in that short space of time about videography and film. And I've accumulated a nice, collection of tools or equipment to try and improve my video game. However, it is not fundamental that you have the best equipment out there with the newest and most up-to-date technology. Although they will make your life a little bit easier, you can certainly capture amazing, amazing content on lower quality, cheaper and a lot less equipment than I have. So it's not about what you have and how much of it you have, it's what you do with it and if you know how to use it. I'm still learning. Every single time I film, I feel like I learn something new, whether it just be like adjusting settings on the camera just to try and get a little bit of a higher quality picture, to learning how to film during night time, uh, etc. I still have a huge amount to learn basically, but I feel like I've got a decent setup and I'm really happy with it. I've had things come and go over the past year. So I'm gonna stop going on. We're gonna take a quick look. I keep on looking down because it's actually all laid around me on the floor. But I'm just gonna go through the sections of the equipment I have and hopefully seed in a few clips that I've used the equipment for so we can actually take a look and see what it looks like using that piece of equipment. So yeah. I'm gonna grab the camera, we're gonna run through everything and uh, see what's in my camera bag. So that right there is my setup. And I think we're gonna start off from the right and move over to the left. So first up, I have drones. Now, in recent times, these are becoming harder and harder to fly. Regulations are tightening up, people are getting upset with them. It's very, very hard to fly these, but if you are in an area, if you are safe, you can fly these and there will be no problem. Why do I have two? Well, initially I brought the Phantom 4, which I absolutely love. I think DJI drones are insane. Uh, very, very happy with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the drone. It's just not very practical to travel around with. So, although I feel the DJI has a higher quality of video from the footage you get i just don't find it very practical so in my dji phantom 4 setup i've got two spare sets of blades because you never ever want to get caught out when you're out and about filming you end up hitting a tree or something not that i'd ever do that and you've not got a blade so a couple of spare blades don't go amiss a couple of batteries as well you get half an hour flight time with these and of course the drone it's got a good weight to it it stabilizes really really well and because it's heavier it doesn't get moved around in the wind so much so you do get a steadier shot and you have a really big controller which I actually quite like, although they're not very convenient to travel around with, I quite like having the big controller to work off of. Next up we have the DJI Maverick. Now, again, with the Maverick, the quality is okay. I think that you get 4K with this also. However, I do feel like you do get a little bit more blur into the picture. If you're really good at post-production, you can really make the shots from the Maverick amazing. Uh, something I still need to learn a little bit more about is maximizing the editing and knowing how to set this up for different conditions. You can get uh, filters, ND filters for these drones. Great, great, great drone for traveling. It's so convenient, it's really small. I have a little protection kit on this. I've got obviously the protection on the controllers so when we're traveling around and it's in the bag, these don't get broke. I also brought from Amazon some extra legs to go on because something that I found with the Mavi was the base of the drone was so close to the ground, taking off in certain terrain was quite difficult. For a tenner or whatever it was, well worth buying those little legs to stand just to give it a little bit of an elevated platform to take off from. Maverick's been amazing, really enjoyed using it. Again, I have spare battery, spare blades, always carrying around the charger of course. Again, half an hour flight time. It does get picked up by the wind quite a lot because it is so light, but you soon get used to it and uh, with a little bit of stabilization in post, uh, the shots are pretty decent. So they're my two drones. Next up, another piece of kit that I'm absolutely loving is, I think it's the Zion free axle gimbal. 
and this is just amazing when you see those really really steady shots this is the kind of thing the guys will be using some people obviously have like double handled big frames the gimbals and the stabilization systems online are endless there's so many and again it just comes down to how much you want to carry around with you how much you want to spend i've actually had three gimbals now uh, i started off with the b holder i then had for a very short time another brand i can't remember what it was called it was a beautiful beautiful gimbal it had like a wooden handle so nice really really heavy but it was grinding on the uh, motors inside because these have an automated stabilization system in them so when you put the camera up you do do an element of self stabilization but then once that's on the gimbals themselves have these motorizers inside them and the motors will stabilize the cameras even more for you this i think retailed at around about six seven hundred pound so far it's been amazing it has this stand with it and again i brought some spare batteries because you don't want to be caught short ever i really really like this gimbal i can't complain it's probably one of the cheapest on the markets and one of the lightest which once you've got equipment and you start loading up in your bag it soon gets very heavy so really really nice to have a gimbal that's light convenient and hasn't yet let me down next up the fun part this is my sony alpha 7r mark ii and this camera for me was probably the best investment that i ever made for film i think that it's a really really great piece of kit i also love it for photography as well i do use this to take pictures on yeah it just picks up really well at night time go on and talk about this camera for a very long time but i'm sure many of you have heard that sony alphas at the moment they're just killing it this camera does film in 4k frame rates i normally film at 50 frames per second i can get a nice smoother slow motion however that does mean that it films at 1080 so basically when you see these cameras and they say they film in 4k that will be at in in sony terms 25 frames per second this camera can do 4k at 25 but not at any other frame rate so they think it goes up to 100 so 50 would be 1080 and 100 would be 720 it just means that the quality degrades as the frame rates increase It's great for slow motion but not so good for quality um, it all depends what you're trying to do does it matter if you're going to be filming at 100 frames per second at 720 if it's going to be looked up on a mobile device probably not so much but if somebody's going to watch it on a 4k tv they're going to see a, a huge difference between the 4k and the 720 great bit of kit they are going to be releasing a new camera soon that i believe is going to have the 4k at better frame rates and there's probably going to be loads more to the camera so very exciting times for sony definitely advise buying this camera if you're really trying to step up your game in videography or photography really really impressed with it my lens setup on this camera is i've got a prime 1.855 mil which i would say is probably the favorite lens i have it's just really really like diverse the camera actually has an, a setting in it where you can do a 35 mil zoom so technically you can have an 80 mil lens on this lens so you've got the 55 here you'd put the settings on the camera to zoom in 35 you don't lose any quality you've technically got an 80 mil lens on here so between the 55 and that i use this loads probably my most used lens the quality the pickup i just absolutely love it so this is the 1.8 55 mil for those gimbal shots where i'm walking around on the gimbal 90 percent of the time i'm using this f2 28 mil which is basically just a wider angle so this is kind of like true to eye this is wider you're going to get a lot more in the frame when you're doing stabilization work this is obviously lighter which means it's going to be uh, more effective on the gimbal and you're also going to be able to crop in more capture more um, so you can just see what's going on between the two that is basically all i really use when i'm filming it's a nice little light setup you're going to get given the contrast between wide angle and close up perfect for filming the next edition which i'll get to in a second is going to be a macro i picked up this lens here which i really wanted a lens that was going to be able to get me close into like wildlife stuff and i could be far enough away to not disturb them but get nice close-up shots so i picked up this f4 70 to 200 mil telescopic lens and it is an amazing lens i can't fault it i think for photography if you're trying to picture like a dog running on a beach action shots this is an incredible lens if you want to try and shoot somebody on a boat naked to put it in the newspaper probably want to get a better lens than this to be fair but it's kind of like a pap lens it's a big lens and it's not very convenient to carry around it's huge when you've got it on the camera it does 
way more than the camera so you end up with this imbalanced tilt there's a lot of shake i just didn't find it very good for filming if you're going to stick this on a tripod and you're not going to be on a surface that's going to vibrate or move then it's probably a great lens but in general i'm always on the move i don't have a lot of time so using this lens did become kind of problematic so i am going to be selling this so if there's anybody out there that wants to buy a 70 to 200 mil lens then let me know um this is going to be sold and i'm going to replace it with a i think it's the 2.8 90 mil macro lens and basically the macro lenses are lenses that get that really really close high definition detailed shots when you see like in videos people's eyes that'll be shot on a macro lens so that's going to be my next investment i'm going to sell this and buy that that's kind of like my bulk camera setup right there this is what i capture most of my stuff on these two lenses here with the camera I have three batteries, so there's one already in the camera and then I have two spare. I've never ever ran out, but I'd probably just suggest just getting loads of batteries because you never ever want to get caught short. There's nothing worse than running out of battery and not being able to capture content. I've got these two. These are actually aftermarket. I've had no issues with them. I brought them off Amazon. It's the Arav Power batteries. You probably don't get as long recording on these because obviously they're cheaper and they're aftermarket. If you can get the Sony ones, great. I was heading off to the Maldives, I think, and in desperation, I grabbed up these two because the Sony ones weren't in stock on Amazon and they didn't have them in store at Jessup's. So it seems to have been fine. Can't complain. Next up, I have this polarizer and ND filter. Now, oh hello. Um, this is something that acts as a pair of sunglasses. So when you're filming outside, if you want to create a nice depth of field um, in your shots, but because it's so bright, you're having to really like up the f-stop. You can stick this on. You can adjust the amount of stops that this has, and then I don't know if I can. Oh, it's really hard to show you. So basically, as you turn this, they're called stops and each stop will make this darker and darker so you can see less and less through. That obviously lets less light through into the lens, which means that you can decrease the f-stop, meaning you're gonna create more blur in those bright conditions. So I found this really handy, certainly when we're traveling abroad in nice sunny places, like as I mentioned, the Maldives, and it also has a polarizer on it. Polarizers are amazing because they kind of remove the reflection on objects or through glass. So if you were trying to film out of a window, then you can adjust the polarizer so you can get a clear a picture through the glass amazing technology this was about 180 pound it's from a brand called genus tech and this is the 77 mil um, and i think it's got about eight stops on it really really nice piece of kit probably my most recent pickup actually uh, i used to have a smaller nd filter that didn't have the polarizer on it um, i would advise trying to invest in this a little bit because if you go too cheap, it's really gonna play around and mess up the quality of your content. That's the camera setup right there. And then sound, very important. I have two Rode Go's. The reason why I have two is because this one's for the Sony. Uh, I had the dead cat on it and this just slots straight onto the camera, plug it in, away you go. I think these are like, they're, they're under a hundred quid, I think, um, like 60 or something, I can't remember. But these are great, very easy. I'm sure there's better mics on the market, but, I can't complain with this, it's been great. And then the reason why I have a second one is because I wanted a mic for my Olympus pen, which I'm filming on now, but I do have my old one over there, which we're gonna go to next. And I had to do like a little DIY job here. So if you can see, I've glued on the Olympus base. So this is what comes with the pen Fs or the pens. And uh, this is for their mic. So at the front, their mic here sticks in and it's kind of like a bullet and it's not bad but I wanted something a little bit of a higher quality. So I ended up fabricating this together and I've got the road and fabricated it onto the Olympus pen and it works, it's good. Um, again, plug and play, does the trick. So they're my two microphones. And then as I just mentioned, my vlogging camera. So what I'm filming on now is the Olympus Pen F. It's what I do all my talk to the camera stuff on. This is the old one, it actually broke, which is a shame. I was trying to film um, before I got the Sony, the waves in the sea and it got some water damage on it. So this camera doesn't actually work anymore. I need to go and get it fixed. This is the Pen F and I'm actually filming on the kit lens. This lens here is the 25 mil. I don't film on this. This actually um, is far too close. So you'd end up just seeing like my eyes and mouth. The kit lens, you get a lot wider angle. An amazing camera. I have the Monfrotz stand, which is very convenient. You can just like pop it down and uh, it just gives you something 
to work off of. I also have a mini Gorilla Pod, which I'm filming on now. I've actually got it on here. I don't know if you can see it, there it is. <laughs> this is uh, and also a very handy little piece of kit uh, when you're traveling around just to attach stuff. Next little bit of camera equipment is my GoPro setup. So here I have the Hero 5. Uh, I know they've just recently brought out the Hero 6. It looks incredible, but this I brought, um, again actually, I brought this as we were gonna head out to the Maldives. I have it with a sucker on because I've recently been doing a lot of stuff with cars. So this sticking this on the windows and uh, on the bodywork. I found this really convenient for underwater work that's why I brought it I have this what I use as a mouth guard so if I pinch my mouth on this with a GoPro so you can get that kind of like uh, face like eye perspective really nice effect I have a float which basically when I was um, filming underwater I used to hold this and then like look around with it and then obviously if I lost the GoPro or left it it has this orange base on it, it floats to the surface acts as a buoy um, so hopefully you don't lose the GoPro when I was out with Bola in Ibiza we had the GoPro on the head attachment which I also have here and I did a backflip into the sea and the GoPro actually flung off my head and that started sinking luckily I like darted down and caught it but if we had have put that on which I did suggest um, it would have just floated to the surface so would have saved losing the GoPro really impressed with the uh, Hero 5 no complaints you've got a lot of adjustments obviously you have the settings on the back of it here which mean that you're going to be able to play around with the frame size so you can like um, have like wide and stuff like that uh, narrow blah 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 great great piece of kit gives a little bit of diversity into your content so if you want to film underwater you can get like a super wide angle on this if you don't want to buy a fisheye lens for any other camera you have you can do it on this creates a really nice sort of effect and then we have the tripods this is a single legged tripod from Monfrotto this basically I brought because when I'm in crowds of people and I want to like elevate above I can just stick these out and then just hold this with the camera on the top of it and it's going to give me a lot more height and really really handy piece of kit and then this is just a normal tripod again anyone would think I'm sponsored by Manfrotto I'm not um, this is a Manfrotto tripod again just got the extension legs pretty light pretty convenient not the best of tripods I know you can get some really big heavy ones but for all the travel I do uh, this actually fits onto the side of my bag which is really really convenient and I think that's something that I've really focused on with my camera bag equipment is the convenience the weight uh, of everything it needs to be practical it needs to be accessible and a lot of the good quality equipment isn't that so this is kind of like a really great camera bag for those people that are traveling and trying to capture things on the move next up we have my cleaners very important this here you can blow the dust off of your lens before you get your um i can't even remember what these calls i used to call them chamois probably are called chamois clean the lens with so Blow the dust off or grit off with that, clean with a chamois with this, because the last thing you want to do is get your chamois, clean the lens, and then realise that you've just scratched your lens because there was a little bit of grit or stone in there. So yeah, this is a great little investment, cost you a few quid off Amazon again. I'll try and link all of this stuff down below. And then another great little cheap investment is the SD card reader. This hosts all of my SD cards that I have very convenient like the last thing you want is to damage these and lose data so just a simple little black wallet as you can see connects to my hand it's very small um, just keeps everything like tidy in the right place and uh, protected which is the main thing finally over here I have my laptop which generally if I'm traveling comes with me this is the MacBook Pro and then I've got as you guys will know uh, the USB-C is the new adapters on these laptops so I've had to get a converter to my SD card reader which I, I don't mind using now okay like this is the attachment here you get these from Apple or John Lewis or anywhere like that and then again this is just an integral USB to SD card converter which attaches into there got two of those and then lastly an external hard drive this is a lacy one terabyte I've got three of these now I back up everything I do because again you just don't want to lose data it's the most soul destroying heartbreaking thing where you've been out you've filmed and you just lose everything so back up everything on external hard drives when you can 
And then here's the bag. Uh, again, Manfrotto. Uh, this bag I purchased. God, when did I purchase this? It's just kept its condition. It's got really great compartments. You actually get two of these. Um, to go in the bag on either side, but my gimbal sits down the side here and then I put my Sony in here, Olympus in there, Maverick in there and then down the side of the bag I use this handle here and then I attach that onto the side and that's where my tripod goes and then in the bottom here I put my external hard drive and chargers and stuff and then at the top I normally put like my passport and stuff in there down the side here's my SD card readers and then spare blades and stuff go in there as you can see more spare blades um, GoPro stuff it's a great bag laptop holder down the back so the laptop goes in there. This bag I picked up from Jessup's. I can't remember how much it was. It was gonna be around about 100 quid. Um, it's black, which means it doesn't look too bad when you wear it. And it does have the double straps on the outside. So you can strap it around your body if you're going hiking and you're worried about it coming off. Really, really grippy padded straps, which are amazing. But after a while, they because they're so grippy, they do kind of like pull on your shoulder and skin a little bit. Certainly when you're wearing like a t-shirt or no clothing at all, they really grip. But can't complain. Love the bag to pieces. So that wraps up the video of what is in my camera bag. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I'm really sorry if it was a little bit rush, rush. I knew that it was going to take a long time to get through everything if I went into too much detail. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce things properly and if I said anything that wasn't necessarily true, like the prices of things. I didn't do any preparation for this video, which I would have loved to have done, but it has been an extremely busy week as I mentioned and I'm going down to London to a Dolce & Gabbana event in about an hour, so I knew I didn't have a huge amount of time. I hope I covered everything well enough and you got to see what was in my camera bag and understand kind of like the purpose behind everything. I guess to summarise it, I said earlier, like everything to be practical, convenient and relatively lightweight so I can carry it around with me. I have my drone, my gimbal, my Sony which I use for the shots that you see in between my vlog sections where I'm talking to the camera, the Olympus Pen F that I use to talk to the camera. I primarily use a 55mm and a 28mm lens on the Sony and the kit lens on the Pen F. And the GoPro I'll use for shots such as external cars, underwater, if I wanna get anything wide angle or from my perspective, and of course the drones. So that's kind of like a really quick summary of why I have all of this equipment. I think it gives me a nice diverse perspective of everything. I can get in the air, I can get in the water, I can get nice smooth shots, I can get rough and ready shots, and I have the different frames and the different angles to be able to capture things from different perspectives. So I think when you're filming, something that's really important is giving the viewer a well-rounded experience and a well-rounded visual so they can really feel like they're a part of what you're a part of or what you're doing and so you can showcase this in the best light possible. But for me this has been like an amazing year, uh, I've really enjoyed getting into videography and adding to my camera bag and honestly I appreciate all the kind comments that you leave underneath my videos saying that you really enjoy the content and you think that it's a great quality because I'm always learning, I'm always trying to improve and it's those comments that keep me motivated to keep on pushing myself, keep on learning and uh, yeah just improve and improve and improve. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. I'm gonna get ready to head down to London. Uh, Lydia's gonna be home any second. I need to tidy all of this up and put it in that little bag. Uh, it's amazing that it mostly fits in, isn't it really? But yes, thank you for watching. I will leave all of the products listed below, as I mentioned, and we'll be seeing you on the next one. Peace.